evening, everyone, and thank you so much for coming out here for our program we ready for kindergarten. Well, we have students who are going to be entering kindergarten, and believe it or not, when I do the calculation of your plan, your student will be graduating from this high school, and they stay here, with a class of 2036. so much for coming out here tonight. We really appreciate it. This is just an, uh, an overview to you as parents so you will get to meet a couple of uh, important people. So you'll meet the principal, you'll meet some of the supervisors, you'll meet the director of early childhood. And um, so if you want to just tell you a little bit about, I know you may have a lot of questions, and I believe that if you have questions, you can put them on the outside um, by the big S, the bomber symbol, out in the hallway, and we will answer questions at the end. There will be an opportunity for you to meet in a small group with the principal of your child's school. Okay, so you can have a sm smaller group session. But let's begin this, this session here right now. I'm Dr. Marilyn Chediak. I'm the assistant superintendent of curriculum and instruction. Hi, it's my pleasure to welcome you to this evening. All right, so kindergarten. Kindergarten is not what it used to be. I mean, back in the day, I'm not going to tell you how long ago it was that I was in kindergarten. It was half day, we had playtime, we had nap time. Um, as someone said to me, it was like, you know, a couple songs and dances, well, it's not that way anymore. There's a lot more to kindergarten. By the way, how many of you, this is your first child who's entering kindergarten? Just raise your hand. Wow. Okay, great, great. But it's an exciting journey, and you're going to love it here. How many of you have had children in our preschool program? In our wonderful preschool program. Okay, terrific. Good. So, this is where your child and your journey is going to begin. It's not what it used to be. It looks, like I said, it looks very different than what it did years ago. By the end of kindergarten, at this time next year, the vast majority of children will be actually reading. They'll be picking up books and they will be, they will be reading. Kindergarten is really where your child's educational journey begins. We follow the New Jersey Student Learning Standards, and information about that is available both on our district website and on the State Department of Education website. The New Jersey Student Learning Standards are known for their rigor. And the children are challenged, but in a fun and engaging way. It's here that your child's educational foundation is developed and their love of learning is fostered. Now we have a couple things that we do in kindergarten, beginning in kindergarten, that are a little bit different. We do what's called standard-based grading. Your child does not receive an A, B, C, D grades like that. We base the grading on particular learning standards. And your student will either be meeting the standards, exceeding the standards in particular areas. Maybe they need some support. So we have more of their approaching standards. So the report cards look a little bit different than what you're accustomed to, but you can find out information about that out on our district website. We also do kindergarten first grade grouping. Your child will have the same teacher for kindergarten and first grade. The teacher moves with your child, and we found that to be very beneficial because they get to really know your child. And they know where your child's at, they know your child's strengths and weaknesses. They're not spending the first month or so in first grade getting to know your child and your child getting to know the teacher and you know the way the teacher sets up their classroom and so on. So we found that to be really beneficial. So that's something that you can expect in kindergarten and first grade, and then once the child moves to second grade, they have a different teacher each year. So 
that's just a little bit of an introduction for you, but now I'd like to introduce some very important people here who will be talking to you um, about different things throughout the evening. So we have first, we have our principal from Arley School, Mr. Robert Preston. We have our principal from Eisenhower School, Mr. Scott Nuremberger. And we have Mr. Dale Rubino, who's currently the principal here at the high school, who will be the principal in September, or actually as of July, at Eisenhower Elementary School. From Truman Elementary School, we have Mrs. Amy Stuber. In Wilson School, we have Mr. Timothy Byrne. We have our Director of Early Childhood Education, Ms. Audrey Burns. And we have our Supervisor of Early Childhood Education, Mrs. Pamela Schlock. At this point, I'm going to turn it over to Mrs. Schleck who's going to give you some very important information. All right, let's see if you can hear me okay. Um, hi everyone, it's Dr. Shetty Eriksen, I'm Pam Schleck, I am the Supervisor of Curriculum Instruction for Early Childhood Education, which encompasses grades pre-K, K-1-2, so I'll be with your children for a couple more years, which I love. I'm going to talk about curriculum today, um, first. And don't do what I did. <laughs> yes, All right. So I'm going to talk about language arts and mathematics. So in kindergarten, your child will learn so many exciting new things. At the beginning of the year, your child will be introduced to the alphabet working on letters and sounds, which they probably have been working on already in preschool. Sight words will be introduced each week. Um, sight words are common words that students can recognize instantly without sounding them out. I was going over this with my husband, and he said, you might want to go over what sight words are. I said, we don't know. We have four kids. The youngest just graduated um, high school. And I said, I don't know what sight words are. So he said, make sure you go over that. So common words that they they're almost they're memorized, so they know them instantly. And you would want to practice these new sight words um, and the older ones with your child nightly. And this helps with that reading fluency and the writing because they know these words. For our literacy block, we utilize Fontes and Pinnell Classroom. The components used are shared reading, which are the big books, which they had in preschool. Um, and they're so great. They're, it's a new component, and the students can read along with the teacher. And we also have IRA, which are interactive read alouds. I brought some. So they're based on text sets. This text set is the letter at work, letters at work, the alphabet. And you'll notice they're all trade books that you could get at the library or buy at Barnes & Noble, Amazon, we have on Market Street, this is a long one though. Um, B is for Bulldozer, ABC I Like Me, Alphabet Under Construction, and the teacher reads them, asks questions, they work on um, if there's a message, and focus on specific, uh, specific goals, 
And then the cards will have writing activities, art activities, movement, crafts, and lots of great things to extend that learning. We also have reading mini lessons, which are specific mini lessons related to working together in the classroom. So they work on classroom management, how to do things within the classroom, literary analysis, skills and strategies, and writing about reading. As the year progresses, your child's teacher will begin guiding reading groups. If your child is a reader, that will happen sooner than later. They do identify in preschool those students that are reading so that teachers are aware. Um, the groups are determined by your child's reading level and are differentiated based on the student's learning needs. Reading levels are determined by a one-on-one -on -one reading assessment. So we have two types of reading assessments. We have a one read, which are books that they have already read with their teacher. And the teacher will have them read, um, they'll notice, the teacher will notice the fluency, miscues, which are the mistakes that are made, and have a comprehension conversation with the student. Now, cold read, that happens twice a year, in January and at the end of the year. That's based um, using the BAS, which is a benchmark assessment. So it's the same format, but the students are familiar with the book, so the teacher can see, are those skills and strategies I'm teaching them? Are they utilizing them? So while teachers are meeting with the groups, the rest of the class will be engaged in daily five activities, which are read to self, <coughs> writing about reading, listening to reading on a computer, um, word work, so working on those phonic skills, and work on writing. So lots of reading and writing throughout the day. In addition, your child will participate in writer's workshop using Fontes and Pinnell's writing mini lessons. Your child will be exposed to various types of writing. Although many of the words may not be spelled correctly, your child will be encouraged to write and tell their stories using drawing and an inventive spelling as they progress as writers. So we use Envision Math Theory starting in kindergarten, and it's aligned with the standards, and CPA mod, it has a CPA model, which stands for Concrete, Pictorial, and Abstract. So students learn a concept using manipulatives, which are hands-on objects, to create a concrete representation of the concept. Then they draw a representation using pictures, and then finally they substitute mathematical symbols for the picture. The teacher always models the different math concepts through hands-on interactive learning experiences. And the students may also watch an educational video for each concept called a visual learning bridge. Various questions are posed to the students throughout the video, which allows for discussion within the lesson. So in preschool and kindergarten, um, we're using ST Math, which is a computer program. You can use it at school and at home, and even in preschool, I believe you could use it at home throughout the summer, so you'll probably get information about that. It's a game-based program where the students meet Gigi, this cute little penguin that you see on the screen. ST Math helps you, your child learn math concepts rather than just rote um, math problems. The problems start out easier and get more challenging as the student progresses. When they reach a challenging problem, your child should attempt the problem and then use the visual feedback provided to help them figure out why their answer did or did not work. This encourages a productive struggle, which helps your child to persevere as they encounter challenging math problems in the future. I'm very excited. I'm looking forward to working with your children next year. And it's really such an exciting time. Now I would like to introduce Amy Stuber. She is the principal, came up this one, right? principal of Truman School.
Good evening, everyone. I'm going to be speaking about the ways that you can support your child's education. You are your child's most important teacher. Read to your child every day for 20 minutes. This is one of the single most important things that you can do with your child in order to help your child progress in reading. Modeling reading for your child helps them to become better readers. Practice the letters of the alphabet. Your child will need to recognize each letter, be able to make the sound of the letter, and also be able to write the letters. Your child should practice writing his first, his or her first and last name. Your child will learn many sight words, as Mrs. Schleck said. You can hang word cards around your house so that they can recognize these sight words. Limit the amount of time that your child watches TV and plays video games. Having conversations with your child helps him or her to understand how language works. Go to the public library, check out books. Create a reading area in your home. Practice writing skills by writing notes to your child and have them write back to you. Have your child help sort items according to color, size, and shape. You can use blocks, silverware, toys, or other household items. Teach your child to make various patterns, such as red, blue, red, blue. Garage sale dot stickers and craft pom poms are great for this purpose. Practice counting out loud with your child. You can do this in the car while you're driving or waiting on a ride. Count stairs as you walk up and down them. You can count backwards as you walk down them. Hang number cards on the stairs. You can count objects in your home. Have your child point to each object as he or she can. Teach your child numerals 1 through 10. Go on a shape hunt. Point out circles, triangles, squares, rectangles to your child while you're taking a walk or at a store. Talk about positional and directional concepts like up and down, over and under, in and out, behind and in front of. Talk about opposite words like big and little, empty and full, slow and fast. First-hand experiences are also important for your child. Your child will grasp concepts and skills better if he or she experiences the real thing. Take trips to a local zoo or an aquarium. Visit museums. Visit the local library. Visit a bookstore. Visit parks or art performances. Visit geographic locations such as mountains, beaches, forests, and deserts. All of these experiences help build background for your child when they begin to read. Your child needs lots of opportunities for play outside of school. Playing is the way that children learn about themselves. Playing both alone and in small groups helps facilitate learning and allows your child to practice skills and concepts. This time with your child will go by so fast. Most of all, have fun and enjoy this time with your child. And I'd like to welcome all of you to think about what your child is going to do. Next up, we have Mr. Scott Nurnberger, the principal of Ivan. Thank you. So I, I get to talk about the really fun stuff. Uh, independence and socialization. Uh, you know, when, when you think about being ready for kindergarten, uh, Ms. Stewart did a great job of talking about academics, right? Can, do they know their letters or sounds? Can they spell their name? But we often forget about independence and socialization, social and emotional learning. And this is just as important of key to success for your child and you in kindergarten. Uh, it, it all kind of comes together. 
And without what we're going to cover next, um, the academics sometimes take a seat to it, actually. So uh, I can always tell the difference, you know, excuse me, I can always tell who's ready for, uh, for kindergarten with these social skills uh, by the way you're sitting right now. So I'm going to go over some skills right now, and, and you're going to start to hear them, and some of you are going to start to sink down in your seat. Oh. Oh. Uh, and some people are like, we're all right. Uh, anyway, all right, so let's talk about me changing this slot. Ah, there we go. Uh, soft skills, okay? Uh, some of these I need work on too. Sharing, taking turns. A uh, few of you are ready. Oh. Um, accepting no. How about that? What do you mean I can't do that? I can't put my feet up on the chair? Um, listening and following directions, following rules, stating needs. It's a huge one. I need. It's very, sometimes it can be very difficult for our, our young children to put into words their needs, what they're feeling. That's when we see outbursts, tantrums, things like that. It, it's, a, it's a skill they need to work on and develop, and you need to work on it with your kids. If you see them starting a tantrum, get frustrated, react, use your words, what do you need? Can, you, can your child articulate those needs? Really important skills, okay? Uh, transitioning activities is a huge one, too. Um, oftentimes at home, you know, they're playing and they don't have to transition from something that they want to do to something less desirable. So doing those transitions and getting acclimated to that is very important also, and being flexible. So start to think about these soft skills because they intertwine into everyday life in the kindergarten. And again, can make or break your, your experience and your child's experience as well. Okay? Um, so the keys to success. Understand the difference between right and wrong, and understand that there are consequences for your actions. Okay? Uh, we have logical consequences in human life. Okay? Uh, you know, we don't suspend everybody. Uh, you know, if you make a mess, you have to clean it up. Right? Um, you know, if, if you use your hands and you do something to another classmate that gets them upset, you have to say you're sorry for what you did and, and reflect. How did that make you feel? Okay? Um, use your words to express needs and feelings. We just went over that. And understand that others have feelings too. Okay? That can be difficult, especially for our eldest kids and our only children. Um, what do you mean there's other people that have feelings too? You know, that's, a, that's a new world. Now we've got 20 people to think about also. And my actions affect all of them. And this is a whole new world for everyone. Like I said, sharing, taking turns, using nice, kind words when playing with other children, all important skills. Playing alone or with other children without needing constant supervision. That, that's one that our kids today have to struggle with to some degree. I know when I was a kid, when I was a kid, we'd go out and play in the backyard and in the neighborhood, and you know, somebody's pat mother would yell out the back window, you got to go home for dinner. Uh, today, our kids, a lot of them go from school or structured play to structured activities. There's coaches, there's teachers, there's mentors, and there's not a lot of opportunity to play on your own and figure out how to get along with someone else without an adult there intervening. Okay? Teaching our kids to use their words and work out their problems without running to an adult to fix them is a very important skill for our kids and for us too. Uh, so, so that's one we're going to work on. And that's one to pay attention to also. You know, you, you want to be there for your kids. You know, I'll help, I'll help. Okay, I'll intervene. Let them work it out a little bit. Just take a step back. And a lot of them will start to work out their problems on their own if you give them a chance. Okay, making decisions independently and taking risks while remaining safe. Learning is about taking risks and learning from them. Sometimes we take risks that we shouldn't, and oh, I'm not going to do that again. Uh, and at other times, hey, that worked out pretty well. I feel good about that. You know, I jumped in the deep end, and I know how to swim, and, and I feel pretty good. So taking risks and remaining safe are also things we can facilitate for our kids as well. Okay. Um, Ah, there we go. Okay, this is this is my favorite here. All right, take a look at this list. Are you feeling good about this? Okay. 
Can your child tie their shoes? Can they put on and take off a coat? Can they go to the bathroom independently? Right, ask yourself these things. Now, I'm going to explain why these things are very important in a second. Uh, can they zipper their coat? Can they open their lunch? Can they buckle a seatbelt and they know how to blow their nose? You have to remember, whatever you put on them when they go to school, they're going to need to know how to take off. Kindergartners have two states. A state of calm rest. No, I don't have to go to the bathroom. I don't have to go to the bathroom now. I don't have to go to the bathroom now. In fact, I'm going to have to go to the bathroom all week. Or the other one is urgency. I have to go. I have to go right now or I'm going to go with my pants. There's only two options with five and six-year-olds. They're going to need to know how to take off whatever they wear to school. We can't help them assist them in the bathroom. Okay? Now, luckily, every, every kindergarten in the classroom has a bathroom attached to it, most of them. Okay? But they're going to have to take off whatever you put on them. This is especially true at Picture Day. If you don't remember this, carnage in our kindergarten classrooms. Carnage. I'm telling you right now, don't subject your child to what we like to call the march of the wooden soldier down to the nurse's office. It's true. And, and I don't particularly like to, to tie wet shoelaces, um, although Mr. Rubino is going to find out all about that pretty soon. Um, it's great, really. No, it's not a problem. Um, work with your kids on on zippers, on buttons, and make sure that they can navigate through whatever you put on them. Okay? Very, very important for them and us and you. Okay? Um, tying your shoes. I, I love tying shoes. Um, work on it. Okay? Uh, opening lunch. It's a big one. Yes, we'll help your kids open their lunch, but we have over 100 kids in each of our grade levels schools uh, and we're here to assist them and work through the process and all that but if they can open their lunch on their own it's a very very important skill to help us out as well um, on a side note never pack their snack and their lunch together because what happens is they take out everything in snack time and eat their lunch and their snack together and then they don't have anything for lunch so separate those and put their name on everything everything like, get a label maker. I don't know, put it on everything. Coats, jackets, shoes, um, lunch boxes. Make sure their name is on everything. It's also beneficial to make sure they know how to blow their nose and buckle their seatbelt. Um, if they're taking the bus, the bus driver isn't permitted or isn't supposed to be buckling the child's seatbelt. They're supposed to be able to do that on their own. All things to work on. Okay. Uh, uh, to expand on this a little bit more, they're starting school in September. Okay. They need to be in school by 850. Start to get them into routines. Don't wait until the day before kindergarten to start. To get them into routines that you're going to need set before school starts. Start that process early. Start in August. What time do you have to do? You have to get up at 7 o'clock in the morning, start to get them up at that time. Several weeks before. This is just going to help you out. Okay. Get them into those routines. Start to give them jobs and responsibilities around the house that they can do. If they're asking what need, need a response, it's not bad to make them wait. All well, right? But you're thinking, oh, no, my kids are wait. Mom, 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 mom. <laughs> I heard it last night. Uh, mom, 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 mom. I'm thinking that's not my name, so I don't have to respond. Um, start to make them wait. It will help them with patience and taking time to learn the classroom with one or two or three kids. There's no problem. Okay. All right, we're doing all right so far, right? Okay. Okay, so we want your partnership. We need your partnership, and you want ours. Keep that line of communication open with the teacher, the guidance counselor, with the principal, all right? Um, share with 
with us things um, that are happening in school that you feel are affecting your child at home. If your child's coming home and feeling like there, there might be a problem or is, is feeling in a negative way about something that happened in school, share that with the teacher. But oftentimes, little things trip up little kids that adults don't always see or pick up on. Where we would think, oh, that's a problem. So if your child's coming home and sharing something with you that's a concern for them, make sure you reach out to the teacher. Hey, Johnny said this today, he's not feeling very bad, he's going to know what's going on, just give you a heads up. Okay? If something happens at home that might affect your child's behavior or their emotional sleep, I know it's delicate and a lot of things look very personal that happen at home. Don't be shy. Please share that with your teacher. If we got a kid coming in hot, I'd rather know, you know, Mrs. Smith called me and said, hey, listen, um, John had a really bad night last night. We had some things going on at home. He's going to be off. I'd rather know that coming in than have a child come in agitated and upset, not know the background. And then try and piece it together and call you an hour later and go, oh, yeah, well, we had a bad time last night. I had a feeling he was going to have a rough day. Yeah. Let me know. Okay. Uh, you don't have to give specifics if it's personal, and, but just to give us a heads up, call the teacher. Get in touch with the guidance counselor. We'll be there ready for them. Okay, that's what we do. All right. We're there for them academically, socially, and emotionally. We Communicate that to us so we can help your child out and help you too. Because oftentimes the things that you're struggling with at home, we have resources for suggestions to help you out. Don't be shy. Okay. And that's it for me. And now, Mr. Preston, Principal at Arlen. All right, welcome again. I'm Bob Preston. I'm the principal at Marlith Elementary School. Um, I'm going to talk about a couple of the items up here. We're going to start with, uh, what am I doing? I'm doing food services and before and after care. And maybe I'll turn it over to Mr. Burr. So first thing I want to let you know is how to get acquainted with our website. Most of the questions that you'll ask, everything is up there on the website. You just have to know where to find it. So the first thing you're going to look for is the family section on the website. Once you click on the family section, everything you need is going to be there. So a lot of people ask about uh, the bomber backpack. Everything that comes out, like our newsletters and everything, comes in the bomber backpack. Each school has their own, but this is the district one. So all the information regarding the district will come in the bomber backpack. The transportation department is listed here. So if you need to call them about where the bus is picking you up, um, what time they're going to be there, if they didn't come today, I'm reporting that the bus didn't show up, look on there and you can get all the information you need. The parent portal, this is very important. If you were in the preschool, you probably know already were aware of the parent portal because you use it already. Uh, if not, we'll be sending out information uh, in August about how to get into the parent portal. This is where you'll find everything regarding your student and the upcoming school year. Your schedule will be there. Your teacher will be there. Uh, transportation information will be there. You'll check the report card there. Everything you'll need regarding your child will be in the parent portal. Our district calendars are listed here. I can't tell you how many times we get a student return from the bus um, because there wasn't somebody at the bus stop on an early dismissal day. And then they'll say, I didn't know it was a half day today. And we'll say, you didn't look at the calendar? Like, and we'll post it, we'll send you emails, we'll give you something to print down and put on your refrigerator. Um, so it's really important to take a look at the district calendars, just so you know when the days off are, the holidays, the half days are really important. Also, all our HIV resources are here, so that's the um, HIV stands for harassment, intimidation, and bullying. So everything, any questions you have, all the resources are there. But what I'll say is if you have any questions, call your principal, have a conversation, just a phone call away, and they'll answer any questions that you have. 
Our school's guide is another great document with lots of information. Again, like all the bus stops are listed there. The uh, quarterly uh, semesters are listed. The school times are all listed. Everything is in that, but a lot of great information in our schools. And then also, the school hours is also a separate tab. Leading Edge is our uh, before and after care service. So I'll show you that in just a second, but um, their information is also there. So if you're looking at before and after care, if you have any questions, you can go to the families page and they have a link to their website as well. All right, so some questions regarding food services. Uh, a lot of people will ask typically, what's for lunch? How do I pay for lunch? What if my child forgets their lunch? And what if my child has food allergies? These are some of the most common asked ones. So for what's for lunch, we do have on the website the menus. So that's an easy one when you go and look for uh, the, the school menus. When you hit on it, we have both the elementary breakfast menu and the lunch menu. As far as, I found my questions already. How do I pay for lunch? There's two ways to pay for lunch. Hopefully this is the next clip. No. So we also have the free and reduced lunch applications here. So if you do qualify, we do suggest everybody fill it out. They'll determine if you qualify or not. Um, and if you do, then your child will get either free or reduced lunch. So we do suggest everybody does fill out the form and then try for it. The other way would be through My School Lux. So that's an online service that our school, our district uses. You could open up an account for your child. You could put money onto their account and then they just show up, smile, and they'll get their lunch. Or they'll just take money off their account. Um, the other way is to send in money in an envelope. Every school does it a little bit differently, but basically you put the money in an envelope. Make sure you put your child's name on it, your child's teacher and their class number. Um, and write lunch, because too often they send it in at the same time as picture day or a flower sale or something else, and money comes in, or the book fair, and they don't know what the money's for, and your kid comes home with 25 books, and you're like, how do you get all these books? I'm like, you gave me an envelope with 50 books in it. Well, that was for your lunch. So make sure you write school lunch on it, all right? And, well, Tim is going to talk to you about the next one. All right, and here's Mr. Byrne. Before I talk about the uh, elements that they've asked me to speak about tonight, I just want to give you a little uh, heads up. So when we talk about child development, we talk about areas of equilibrium and disequilibrium. And based upon having been here for half hour or so and your responses so far, I think you're going to send us a lot of five-year-olds this year who are very much in equilibrium because you are a very docile crowd. Uh, you're sitting here, you're very, very polite, very respectful, uh, but we're sure you have lots of questions. Uh, and so we hope that as the evening progresses, you have an opportunity to um, share those, whether it be in the general group or when we get together uh, per school. But I, I must share, very excited about the fact that if the children that will be coming to us in September are like you, uh, it's going to be a very, very interesting and different uh, kindergarten experience because of the fact that uh, you're also together uh, in regard to your smiles, in regard to your posture, is really good. So, um, I've been asked, um, and later on they'll tell me I've run out of my time, so I have to speak quickly here. Um, but I'm going to talk about safety and security, and what that means for, they told me not to walk, um, what it means for you, and what it means for uh, your children when they come. Safety and security is a very important element of life in the Sarajevo Public Schools. So if you are brand new to us, you are going to feel as though you're going to be checked into the White House. Uh, because we're going to ask for ID, we're going to ask for you to empty your pockets, 
uh, your, those are your pocketbooks if you carry one, uh, because we want to make sure that you, when you come into school, you are coming into school and so that you're not going to be of any issue to any of us during the course of the day. Now, all of our schools have security vestibules. So if we deem it's necessary for you to come inside, we'll have you come in, um, but you still can't go into the school because we have different protocols that we follow with that. So try to make life easy for you. We will not call Cerebral Police Department if you arrive in a car and you can't produce your driver's license. But we need ID. So it's very important for you to be able to bring that ID uh, to school. You'd be surprised the number of people who show up with no ID. And they'll say, remember me? I was at that parent uh, orientation last June. Remember me? No, sorry, you're not. Um, so we are not trying to be disrespectful to you, but I think you are, are all very bright people. You understand what our job is. Through the law, we are responsible for the children from the minute they get on the bus in the morning uh, until they go home in the afternoon. We take that responsibility very seriously, and you may have many stories to tell us, but we are looking for certain information as to why you are there and the reasons that if you are sending someone else. So this is a particular outreach to all of your, your parents, your children's grandparents, or aunts and uncles. Yes, then, you may be the grandmother who has raised this child from day one, but I don't know you, and you have no ID to prove to me that you are this person, and so no, you may not take this child. So the purpose, obviously, of my stories here would be to just ensure, as you go home, that you're going to relate that information to Ken, because you're a very receptive crowd. You are waiting on everything I'm going to say. You are listening. Some people are taking notes. I see pictures of people taking pictures of phones. So I will then say back to you, remember at that parent night when I said that? You need to do your homework to be able to bring that up to us. All right. So the main issue, of course, as I said, is we just want you to be aware of what our protocol is. Again, that protocol is for your safety and your child's safety. And we are not trying to prevent you from being able to take your child home, but you just need to be able to provide us with the necessary uh, information about that. So we greatly appreciate if you would tell us ahead of time that you're coming. We understand there are emergencies in life, but knowing ahead of time that you'll be coming at 3 o'clock or 2.45 presents uh, a very different scenario than if you don't tell us you're coming, and all of a sudden, we have to go where the child, the child gets very upset. Like, why am I going home? What's going on? Okay? Good. Great. All right. Um, just by the way, this video, it's being videoed, and the PowerPoint is here. So you'll be able to later on go home and watch again. Who wouldn't? Um, and so you'd be able to uh, be able to access that information. So don't feel as though that if you forgot to bring a pen and pencil, and I'm not caring, because there are very few, um, um, you'll be able to access this later on so that you can be able to have that information. Uh, the bottom part there is something that we often run into issues with parents about because of the fact that, please understand that you're coming into our house. When you come into our house, we do certain things. So please be prepared for the fact that the bags will be searched. Um, just a, a briefly, the, the protocol behind this is that we have a shared service agreement uh, with the Federal Police Department, so we work very much hand-in-hand -hand with them. There is an armed police officer in school every day. So that armed police officer is there, obviously, for the safety of your children, while we work there, and also for your well-being to know that there is someone there who is ever-present in terms of projecting to the public um, that uh, we take security very seriously. And obviously one of the byproducts of that is that we're trying to tell all the bad people you don't want to go to Sarah. Uh, because of the fact that we have uh, such a high presence uh, in regard to our security here. 
it's just a very nice agreement uh, that we have with them. It's, it's very cordial, it's very respectful, it's very professional. Um, and so I, I think that uh, if anything, because I don't mean to certainly address in depth the nature of our society today and what happens when children come to school and when people just go out in the general public. Uh, just as an interesting point, we have, um, I don't know if I told you this, we have two students at Wilson right now who arrived from the University of Zurich for an international school. Um, so they, they, they've come to us to visit with us for three weeks because they're going to teach in Switzerland. The first thing they said to me, I said, what is your impression of America? I've been, I've been um, webexing with them for months before their arrival. And they said, like, we're just overwhelmed in terms of security here. It's just very, very different in Switzerland. I said, well, unfortunately, that's just the way it is. And then he began to share about how coverage in Switzerland uh, about American tragedies um, get front page and top news there. So they were mentally prepared, but it was another thing to actually experience it. Okay. Now, this should be a very pleasant experience for you. And this, these slides are numerous. And my purpose in these, with these tonight is not to uh, read every one because again, it will be provided for you on the website and you'll be able to see that. But this is an area, as has been mentioned before, that raises a lot of questions, especially in the beginning of the year, and especially when any kind of transportation arrangements will change. So some of you may be sitting there and say, what's the big deal? I'm gonna walk my child to school, or I'm gonna drive my child to school. Great. Wish you all the best. But if you do that, that's either because you chose to do that, or you live beyond 0.7 miles to school. So we, have, we are providing a bus for your child. As Mr. Nuremberger mentioned earlier tonight, one of the most important things, to, oh, this is your homework. So your homework is to make sure that all your children can buckle a seatbelt independently. And to reinforce with your child the fact that it has to be done every time they get on the bus, and the child needs to be seat belted throughout the entire time of the bus. No exceptions. I don't care if an older brother or your cousin or your neighbor across the street doesn't do that. I'll find out about that. Because we have cameras on the bus. We got lots of cameras on the bus. And increasingly, we are able to provide transportation here through our own bus drivers. That makes a critical difference for us because they're very invested in serving children. They're very invested in the fact that the principals are waiting to find out what's going on. So, in regard to transportation, as I mentioned to you before, that's the path in terms of determination. We got a lot of phone calls like this come like the 15th of August. Do I get a bus or not get a bus? They'll be on the encore, you know, if you're familiar with encores, they'll be on the encore, so they'll tell you what the bus stop is and which bus have. Now, what I failed to mention earlier, because again, you were, you were listening to every word I have said, uh, I'm very in tune. We will send a yellow school bus, possibly to your bus stop, and that yellow school bus will be yellow. Now, take your, take your freedom of logic. If you are on the red bus, no, I am not sending you a red school bus. Literally, five-year-olds will think, well, hold on the red bus, where's the red bus? So please explain that to them. That's more like one of those earth-shattering moments where they realize they're on a school bus that's green, but they're, they're, it's green, for them, but it's really yellow. This is tough crap. So uh, I just want you to be aware of that so that uh, you'll be able to help them in preparation for that. All right? I think I have a couple of pages of this in regard to this. The most important part I just want you to um, 
realize is that the connection between yourself and the bus driver is critical. So you, you need to bring your child to the bus stop. You, get, you need to know who the bus driver is so there is a facial recognition. That's your child. Okay, so introduce yourself to the bus driver. Get to know the bus driver. If there are any special things we need to know, please tell us. As Mr. Nuremberg mentioned before, we like to know that something's going to happen. Or if someone's having a bad day, or forgot a lunch, or whatever. The bus driver is an extension of the school. So it's very important for the bus driver to get to know you and your child. One of the critical elements here is the fact that when the child goes home, there needs to be an adult there at the bus stop. We will not let a child off unless there's someone there through a prearranged arrangement with the bus driver that, okay, you're going to pick up this child. Now, if you're going to pick up someone else's child, we need to know that ahead of time. That could be through a verbal, what we were discussing, like a note to school saying that so and so is going to pick up so and so. We're aware of that. Okay? Now, as was mentioned earlier, beginning of the year, especially if it's warm, your children may very well fall asleep on the bus. They're going to take a nap because they're going to be tired. As soon as they get into the routine of school, it helps. But they're going to be very, very busy, because as was mentioned earlier, kindergarten is a very, very active time. It's a long day. It's very important at this particular point to understand that the children need to be very independent. So if you do many things for them, they're going to become accustomed to you doing many things for them. When they get to school, they're waiting for, like, where's my help? So they have to, so you need to go through that with them to become very independent. That's more homework for you. And Wilson, I'll give you a final exam you know, when we do for parent orientation. Safety. So please make sure that, I know we're all excited, school starting, we do not run to the bus. We wait at the bus stop. If there are any issues at the bus stop, please just give us a call at school. Say there's something going on here. Due to the time schedule, everybody else will have gone through in that same stop. So it should just be you there at that particular time. I know that that print is small, but as I said before, you just need to review that whole element of being able to buckle a seatbelt independently. And I'll reinforce with you, you need to be able to really, you need to go over with them, you need to buckle a seatbelt, but it also needs to be buckled tightly. So, a child can buckle a seatbelt, but the bus turns a corner, the child falls out of the seat. Now a seatbelt on, it's very literal, however, it's not tight. Can I get you? Yes, we're good with that, because that's really important. Um, and also, especially at the beginning of the year, many people will, it's one of, the, one of the primary questions that parents ask a bus driver, especially the first day of school, first week of school, what time will you be back? What time is drop off? Well, a lot of that depends on how many children on that bus learned that independently buckle seatbelt. Because before they leave school, we just make sure they're all buckled. I think I'm giving back time this year. I, I don't feel that, that sense when you're giving me the book. Um, um. <laughs> so, um, any questions at all at any time in regard to transportation, please feel free to call transportation, but always call the school office. Beginning of the year is very difficult because a lot of people have a lot of questions. Um, what we hope to do is be able to, um, we're going to have a kindergarten orientation. Um, Second day of school, and I guess that will be something over that. Yes? Um, so it's fun. 
Uh, kindergarten is a great year. Uh, I hope and really encourage you as I close my remarks here uh, just to share that I hope that you enjoy the journey because when you're a kindergartner, that's a very, very special time. In a year from now, you'll be getting ready to go to first grade. That's different. So really, really cherish this time you have with your children because of the fact that kindergarten is really fun. First grade is fun. School's fun. If you're going to cry when they go to school, try to hold that back. Now that could be tears of sadness, could be the opposite. Um, so I don't know. Um, but again, we're looking at psychological well being of children. So we want to make sure that whatever your emotions are that you're experiencing, that we want to make sure that you have a very positive experience as they go to school. We will have back to school night for you in September. So you'll be able to ask any questions you have at that particular time. We'll always feel free to call us during the summer. Principals work during the summer. Um, and so we will uh, be very happy to answer your questions um, in regard to that. All right? So I believe I'm yielding my time back to Dr. Shet. Oh, Dr. Shemiak? Oh, questions. Yes. Okay. Because of the profile that you've provided to us by your posture, um, we asked people... We, yeah, we ask people to put questions up there. So I'm happy to report that we have a grand total of three. <laughs> so we, we think that this must be a very together class, uh, very together parents, uh, in terms of three questions. So Mr. Nuremberger, give us the first one. Okay. How many children? That uh, triggers a power at 26. So we're typically in, in the low 20s, though, as far as numbers are concerned. Uh, what's my next question? Here we go. Will kindergartners be on the same bus as the older kids? Yes. Uh, we make them sit in the front. Okay. Uh, they tend to have, find adventures in the back. Um, yeah. Not always good ones. We're going to keep them in the front. Uh, if you have siblings on the bus as well, you can get them towards the middle, possibly, because uh, the older kids don't really want to sit with their kindergarten brother and sister at the front, but, but we can work that out as well. Uh, and then before and after school hour programs. Uh, that's our leading edge, and I believe we start at 6.30? 7, 7 a.m. and go to 6.30 p.m. Uh, and they are housed in each of the elementary schools. Uh, if you pitch, you know, drop your child off for leading edge in the morning, uh, we'll get them to class. Uh, and if you, if, you know, if you have them in leading edge after school, we'll get them to leading edge and also with the battle plan. Okay. Uh, anybody any questions? Okay. And this isn't building building specific. We're going to break off into groups in a minute. Okay. But if you have a general question, go ahead. Yell at me. Nap time. No, no nap time. There is break time. We do brain breaks. Uh, they get out, they get the wiggles out uh, and move around. No, we don't play the wiggles. Um, but they do move around, and it, it is developmentally appropriate. But we don't, we don't allow for nap time. It's a good question. Uh, and then, and that's like Mr. Burns said, your kids are going to come home exhausted at the end of the day. Good for you, though, right? Lights out, lights out. Okay, in the back. They eat lunch in the cafeteria, they'll have a snack in the classroom. Okay. Uh, just one thing to watch out for though, um, we do have uh, students with significant allergies, okay? Uh, and if there is a child with an allergy in your class, you will get a note home, okay, uh, for dietary purposes. 
Some of the children's allergies are airborne, believe it or not. Uh, and if any, you can't permit any of that allergen into the classroom, but you'll, you'll get a notice if that that's the case. Uh, you have a question? Yep. Yes, there was special education. Yeah, that's a great question. So um, we have special ed ed education in our kindergarten classrooms. We have uh, two settings, really. Um, there's an inclusion setting where we have special education students that will say, hey, would you like to help uh, in an inclusion classroom? That's two teachers, a gen ed teacher and a special education teacher. The curriculum is the same, the teaching is the same, the children in that classroom get the benefit from the fact that there's two teachers. Okay, so if you have a general education student and they're in an inclusion classroom, you got two teachers, you know, you got lucky, okay? Uh, pull out resource. Um, the children need a little bit of extra help, so they get pulled out for math and uh, literacy and push in for uh, our morning meetings, science and social studies, and some of the collaborative lessons uh, that will be emphasized in the next class. Yep, good question. Over there? It would depend on um, their individual identity. Yes, this can. Um, and on their individual education plans to have a, a paraprofessional. In back, yep. For the new head after after school, is there any special program that they can take a little bit, like doing homework or something like that? They'll do homework with them, yep. Uh -huh. And then take them outside, play games with them. They're very engaging and interactive, and they do their homework right when they get there at the uh, end of the school day. Uh, and there are plenty of staff members there to help them. Yes. 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 You, if you want to drop your child to school, absolutely. If they're supposed to be on the, if they have a bus. That's so you want them to go home on the bus, but you're going to drop off in the morning. Not a problem. And you don't have to let us know in the morning. But you do need to let us know if they're assigned to a bus and you want to pick them up, you do need to let us know that. Okay? If that's something that's going to be permanent, you need to write a letter or an email and let us know that's a permanent thing. Uh, if it's a once in a while thing, we ask that you fill out a form. There's a Joe Hunt Early Pickup Forms. So I'll post it online. And get that in early in the morning. Please do not call at 3 o'clock and tell me your child's dismissal has changed. Okay, we've got, you know, Eisenhower is 500 students, and it's very important that I get them home or safe where they belong. If, if changes are made at the end of the day, it can get very confusing if we're getting caused shins. Um, that might not be ideal. Okay. Yes. Um, you know, the drop-off process is going to be a little bit different in each building. Um, for Eisenhower, um, we have a drop-off lane, uh, and then there's, there's teachers uh, waiting for your children, and at 8.50, they'll start opening doors, they'll let them out. You're going to have them on the uh, pass, back passenger side, rear passenger side. We're going to open the door, they're going to hop out, and you're going to drive away. Okay? Anybody else? Yep. Uh, not for elementary, okay? Uh, we start, our arrival starts at 8.50. Arrival starts from 8.50 to 9.05. The late bell is at 9.05. Don't get there at 9.05. Get there at 8.50. Class starts at 9.05. We really ideally want them in their classroom by 9.05. So they're a part of all of those routines and procedures that your kindergarten teachers are establishing with your children. Kindergarten teachers are masters at routines and procedures, and your children, if they're late, will miss critical, critical instruction and routines and procedures and will set them back. Typically, they miss the first 10 minutes, it takes them a half an hour to catch up. Okay, so being on time is very, very important. Yes? I'm sorry, can you say that one more time? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
they didn't they didn't change those times for elementary. Okay, they're gonna tell so we're starting arrivals starts at 850, the late bell rings at 905, and then we dismiss at 320. Dismissal starts at 320. Okay, our last bus will typically leave, you know, around 330 or something. Okay. Yep. Um, that is breakfast work. Great question. Um, we have bre breakfast in the cafeteria. Um, if you want to send your child to school and have breakfast at school, they can come in off the bus, they go to the cafeteria, they pick up their breakfast, and they go to their classroom and leave them in the classroom. Uh, they could. I would recommend if they're there, if they have breakfast, I would recommend eating at home um, and then coming in. But if they're going to buy it at school, then they can bring it in and leave it in the classroom. Yes. I love that. <laughs> uh, that's the peanut butter. Uh, like this, you'll get a notice um, if someone in your class has a peanut allergy. At lunch, we have peanut-free tables, so those students will go to a peanut-free table, uh, so you should, your child should be fine uh, bringing that to school. But you're going to get notices if there's a significant Okay, and then I'll just do this for the first thing. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Class dojo. Uh, yes, um, some teachers, not all teachers, but a lot of, many teachers will utilize class dojo for communication, for um, class management, uh, but we also have encores, um, and we, you, 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 will, you can utilize that as well as for parents and communication sometimes. Yes. We've got a uh, speech, do they not get it in preschool? They're not in preschool system, but they, they're receiving speech therapy. Contact uh, the guidance counselor or the principal over the summer. Uh, we do have speech therapists, we have occupational therapists, we have physical therapists, uh, we have all kinds of therapists. Um, and, and we can get that set up for you. Okay, good question, yes? Yeah, so if you live close by, you, you won't be, if you're within seven tenths of a mile, you don't get assigned a bus. Okay. Anybody from the south is having too much fun back there. I, I know. Um, anybody else? Any questions? I'm doing okay, right? Yeah. How hard for the school district handling the injuries that happened during the COVID? Um, like if they have a allergic reaction and then like you would have epi pen. Yes. So we have EpiPens, we have EpiPen delegates. Uh, so we have teachers that are signed as EpiPen delegates uh, and then nurse as well. Uh, and there are EpiPens on file. If you have a child with a significant allergy, we're asking to bring an EpiPen for them. Um, so we are prepared and ready for that. If your child has a significant um, health issue or asthma, uh, please get in touch with the nurse so we can put together a medical plan for them, or what we call an asthma action plan, if they have asthma. Um, very important, that line of communication is super important, as I talked about before. Letting us know ahead of time, uh, I prefer no surprises, although our job inherently has surprises, that's what makes it fun. Uh, but there's good surprises and bad surprises, right? Um, a, a health issue is not a good surprise, so let us know ahead of time. Yep, no, that's okay. Oh, early dismissal is 1.35. There are eight early dismissal days uh, marked on the calendar. That would be 1.35. Okay. Yes? So an early dismissal date is the actual COVID program? Yes, it is. After school, pro after school uh, program at Leading Edge is not available on increment letter days. Okay. And national holidays. And what? And national holidays. Thank you, Mr. Halpin. And national holidays not available either. Can I give out the number? Sure. Oh, perfect. <laughs> Anybody else? Yeah. Yes. Schedule pickup time. Okay. Um, 
please make sure you are there 15 minutes before the scheduled pickup time. They're supposed to be there on time, but things get delayed, especially the first few weeks of school. Yes, your buses are going to be a few minutes delayed. Okay, they're going to make sure that everybody has a parent that picks them up at the end of the day. Okay, they're going to make sure that everybody's safely on buckle. All right, so it takes a little bit, it takes a little while for that to happen. So the buses will be delayed. Please be patient. Okay, but our priority is to make sure they get home safely. We get to school safely, we get home safely. Yes, but you were next. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's the only time you don't have to notify us for a drop off if you're going to not take the bus. You have to notify us for a pickup. Is that your question? At ever? Yeah, yeah. Then just send in a note at the beginning of the year. Uh, Johnny will not take the bus. He will be a what we call them walkers. He will be a walker uh, unless notified otherwise. Okay, that's all you have to send. All the bus. Yeah, that's fine. Anybody else? Okay. Are we breaking up now into uh yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so we've learned a whole lot of information here tonight. But I'm gonna just go over with you a couple of next steps. Now I'm going to click it up and we don't we don't need that last slide. So next step, if you did not if you're new to Sayerville School, if you do not have a child in the preschool, please make sure you finalize your registration. Okay, because if it's not finalized, your child's not going to be placed in the school until it's finalized. And what happens is, oftentimes, around the middle of August, we get inundated with people that started their registration, maybe in March or April, middle of August, they finally go into finalize, and right now, your child has been tentatively assigned to a school. Comes the middle of August, if the school is full, may, your child may go to a different elementary school. And we've had that happen a few times, because sometimes one or two in kindergarten are just too full, and we don't have room for another class, so, some of the children who are late registrants do get moved to a different school. Now, transportation is provided and everything, but ideally you want your child to go to the same school that the other kids in the neighborhood go. So if you did not finalize your registration or update your registration if you were a previous student in our preschool program, please take care of that soon. So you have you on record, you have you on the roster for your neighborhood school. And that's really important. Make sure your any of your vaccinations, your physical records are up to date. You can submit all that online. If you are new to Sayerville School, you may be called over the summer to bring your child in for a brief kindergarten screening. Just we just see where your child is as far as their nail readiness and their reading readiness skills, so that we can make sure that. We're aware of some needs. If they have any particular needs, then we can put them into a good class. In September, I think Mr. Byrne alluded to this, the very first day of school for students in grades one through 12 is September 7th. Kindergarten students do not start school that day. That is orientation. That day, and you will receive information from the schools about this in August. That day, you will be invited to come with your child to the school in the afternoon for an orientation. Your child gets to see their classroom and they will get to meet their teacher. Okay, so that's on September 7th. Do not go to put your children on the bus that day. They will start September 8th, which is a Friday. Okay, so um, and we found that really very successful helps the children acclimate, let them see their teacher, their classroom, and so on. And 
basically if you have any questions you can now and six number seven reach out to these people here your principals and they will be able to answer your questions so right now what we'll do is we'll break up into small groups based on the school that your child will be attending are we going to do it in just like the four corners group okay so Please don't move yet. Get this whole situation.